starts right now. Making headlines this morning, Governor Greg Abbott takes steps to stop the number of illegal crossings at the border. We'll have details on his new border security plan. Plus, a new report shows the Justice Department under former President Donald Trump seized data from the accounts of members of the House Intelligence Committee as part of an aggressive crackdown on leaks related to the Russia investigation. The humidity is still out there. Some low clouds, even some drizzle on my way in down Highway 281 for most of my early morning commute. We'll check in with Mike, see how things are looking for our Friday and beyond. Good morning, everybody. We made it to the end of the week. It is June 11th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Well, good. So you got some drizzle, too. I thought I was just, you know, imagining things. You're not <laughs> imagining things today, Stephanie. OK, a little Is bit, it, Mike. OK, so yeah. I, I didn't see anything. We don't live far from each other. I didn't see anything. Well, I uh, came in a little later than you did. Oh, well, maybe that's the case. <laughs> uh, so 281 also and the only other uh, trans guide camera I was looking at uh, around here was over there on the far northwest side over mm -hmm. on I-10. So all right, so watch out for a little bit of mist around the area this morning. And uh, it's not going to amount to too much, but just making the roads a little bit slippery. So take it easy as you uh, hit the roads. Looks pretty good out there. 410 by the airport and uh, 78 degrees. So we are definitely on the, the warm side again and we've gone through the cycle. It was a little more pleasant yesterday afternoon, slightly lower humidity. And now that humidity has come back up with two points back into the mid 70s around here. So we do have uh, somewhat of a heat index right now. It's actually a little warmer than what it was yesterday. 86 is what it feels like at Stinson 81 out there at the airport and mold remains on the low side for right now. Same thing with pigweed, same thing with grass. And other than a couple of, uh, you know, spots of some sprinkles or some mist out there, we'll have a lot Lots of clouds this morning and then more sunshine later on today. Again, low 90s, still temperatures held in check. Lower humidity this afternoon. I mean, not bone dry, but just a bit more comfortable. And this is going to be the situation going into the weekend. And that number is going to start to go up just a couple of degrees. What about any rain chances? I mean, we've, it's been a few days since we've had some rain. We could use a little bit. Details are coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. Governor Greg Abbott's pushing for more restrictions at the border, signing several items into action. He says an increase in security is needed to combat the record levels of illegal crossings, drugs and contraband coming into Texas. Our Jonathan Cotto has been covering the governor's visit to Del Rio and shows us some of the key moments at the border security summit. It was an optimistic and energetic crowd at the summit. Governor Greg Abbott announcing a new and enhanced disaster declaration. It was a summit hosted by Governor Greg Abbott in an effort of bringing together various law enforcement agencies, local officials, and even landowners to announce his comprehensive border security plan. A crackdown on the increase of illegal border crossings, he says, is an ongoing crisis. I will announce next week the plan for the state of Texas to begin building the border wall in the state of Texas. He says migrants crossing illegally will be arrested and confined for trespassing. He calls the state's response the most robust border plan the nation has ever seen. Democratic State Representative Eddie Morales says attention needs to be placed elsewhere. I would much rather focus on technology. I would much focus on personnel, um, improving, putting that money into improving our ports of entry. Morales says Del Rio, along with other border communities, will benefit from additional resources. Abbott says the governor's task force on border and homeland security will crack down on illegal crossings and illegal drugs, adding securing the border is the federal government's responsibility, but Texas will not sit idle as this crisis grows, allocating $1 billion for border security. The governor said some great things, but I, I'll be honest with you, some of it was just fluff. It was fluff. It was just kicking the can down the road uh, and it was throwing more money at the problem and just, you know, just getting more in intertwined with bureaucracy. Abbott says the increase in arrest will require an increase in jail space, but local officials say some facilities are already at maximum capacity. Abbott will be announcing next week his plans to build the border wall, but he hasn't detailed exactly how it will be funded. Reporting in Del Rio, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. New information this morning about how the Justice Department during the Trump administration investigated the president's political enemies. Reports show that prosecutors seized records from Apple regarding the private communications of Democrats to find out who was leaking classified information. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. 
This morning, ABC News has confirmed former President Trump's Justice Department seized the communications data of at least two Democratic members of Congress and members of their family. Sources say prosecutors under Attorney General Jeff Sessions subpoenaed Apple for the data in 2018. According to The New York Times, the prosecutors were investigating who was leaking information about contacts that Trump associates had with Russian officials. This is just the latest in a series of revelations that are uh, very troubling about the Thanks to which this Justice Department went under President Trump. Congressman Adam Schiff is one of the committee members whose data was seized. Uh, shocked on the one hand, not surprised on the other. Schiff, a vocal Trump critic, was then the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. And overnight, Congressman Eric Swalwell confirmed he's the other committee member whose data was targeted. I'm not above the law, just like no one else is above the law. Uh, but to go after this many people, uh, boy, that feels like a Donald Trump driven investigation, and I don't have a lot of faith in his ability to fairly uh, interpret, interpret the law. Sources also tell ABC News prosecutors subpoenaed communications data from aides and family members of Schiff and Swalwell, one of whom was a minor. According to the New York Times, the data being seized resulted in no evidence connecting Schiff or Swalwell to the leaks. But the Times reports former Attorney General Bill Barr revived the investigation when he took over the Justice Department. I view Bill Barr as the second most dangerous person in the country after Donald Trump, uh, and this is just further proof of that. Point. Barr and Sessions have not commented on the reports, but this morning Schiff, Swalwell, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi are demanding an investigation. There will be some serious pressure applied by Democratic members of Congress, including a committee chairman on the Justice Department to get to the bottom of how this happened in the first place. The Justice Department has not responded to our request for comment. As for why this is coming out now, Apple was under a gag order until recently. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. President Joe Biden and world leaders from the group of seven industrialized nations set to formally open their summit today over in the UK. The coronavirus pandemic very high on the agenda. Vaccine sharing commitments from the president and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson showing off a coordinated effort by the advanced economies to make vaccinations widely available everywhere. Queen Elizabeth also attending a series of G7 events today along with other royals including Prince Charles and William and Kate. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden and the Duchess of Cambridge will also appear together this morning at a British preschool. In Washington, a bipartisan group of senators eyeing an infrastructure deal with $579 billion in new spending as part of a $1 trillion total package. The 10 senators are huddling behind closed doors, encouraged by President Biden to keep working on the effort after he walked away from a Republican-only proposal this week, unable to resolve differences. The senators are cautioning that changes could still be made, but call their tentative agreement a realistic compromise framework that would be paid for without any tax increases. Wall Street is hoping to end the week on a good note after the S&P 500 hit a record high on Thursday. Standard & Poor's is considered by most economists to be the broadest measure of the U.S. stock market. The strong day appears to indicate investors are shrugging off inflation fears. A consumer price report showed core inflation rose 5% for the 12-month period ending in May. That's the biggest increase of its kind since 2008. It's rather ominous. The S&P gained 19 points. The Dow picked up 19 as well. And the Nasdaq finished higher with 108 points. And time now is 438, and it's about 78 degrees out there. Next in morning sports, big day for the Smithson Valley Rangers. We have a preview of tonight's game, the 6A state semifinals up in Round Rock. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting off pretty much the same way we started off yesterday, maybe except for few sprinkles here and there for some people. We'll be checking in with Mike later on. 441 in morning sports, lots of baseball. Good luck to the Smithson Valley Rangers will be facing Rockwall Heath in the 6A state semifinals later today at Dell Diamond in Round Rock. It's Rangers first trip to state since 05. That's after they beat Los Fresnos in a single elimination game over T-Date 3 to 2 to win the region four finals. We have faced everything, you know, we faced changing locations, lightning delays, you know, after every week, you know, we played, you know, unbelievable atmospheres, you know, we, we are ready for this. We have to relish every moment that we get because, I mean, now it's our last week, so, I mean, we got to take everything in like it's the last thing that we're going to do because it is. Batter up tonight in Round Rock starting at 7 o'clock.
On to Missions Baseball, following an upsetting loss to Midland Wednesday night, Missions bounced back into the win column. Last night it was close, but San Antonio managed to get the W, 5-4. to four. A win is a win. Series against the Rockhounds continues tonight at 7.05. By the way, the Missions will have three jersey giveaway nights this season, and the first one is tonight. First 2,000 fans will get a free jersey. There will also be post-game fireworks tomorrow night. What are the odds that Becky Hammond becomes a head coach in the NBA this offseason? Pretty good if you listen to sports betting. According to a website, Becky is listed at 6-1 to one odds to become the new head coach of the Indiana Pacers, who just fired their coach after just one season. Not bad odds, even though she's behind Terry Stotts, who was just let go uh, in Portland after nine seasons. Hammond, who has been a Spurs assistant since 2014, also listed at 7-1 to one odds to land the Orlando Magic vacancy, which is fifth overall. Good luck, Becky. Yeah, good luck. I have mixed feelings. Of course, I want her to do well, but, you know, I'm greedy. I want her here. She says that she's ready and that things this I think the quote was this ball never moved fast enough for me. So oh, she's okay. ready for that job now. All right. Well, yeah. then, we, then we wish her well. Yeah. <laughs> Time now is 443 and about 78 degrees right now. Up next is the economy is getting back on track. Why you should be expecting higher prices wherever you go. And welcome back. It's about 446 now. As we mentioned earlier, the U.S. inflation rate is at its highest level since 2008 as the country rebounds from the coronavirus crisis. But what does this mean for your wallet? ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, bracing for rising prices. What we are seeing right now are prices getting back on track. Consumer prices up 5%, rising at the fastest rates in over 10 years. A year ago, shoppers saw prices rising very slowly and even declining. This year, price increases at record pace. Electricity up 4.2% in the past year. The hikes also affecting goods like clothing, the used car market, gas, travel, and certainly groceries. There's a lot of demand a lot of people are out wanting to buy things right now, and that bids up the prices some too. But there are specific strategies geared toward this temporary inflation to help you save money. Coming up at 7 a.m., we have the shopping hacks to keep your budget in check, even if prices go up more. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Right now it's 447. Swim safety and your kids. Every year in the U.S., nearly 400 children Okay, we ki we killed a story, so we're going to move on to Mike Osterhage. Yeah, a good day to swim, though. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and obviously, you know, if kids are in the pool or something like that, is it, watch them like a hawk. You know, never turn your back. So anyway, hey, you both said you saw a little bit of mist uh, this yes. morning coming into work. And, well, I, I popped this trans guide camera up here because just about uh, 10 minutes ago, there were a lot of little droplets on the lens. And now there's really nothing showing up right now. So it is very light stuff. Basically on the north and uh, northwest side is where we've seen it. And then maybe even a little bit here in downtown, too. Um, beautiful sunset. That's gorgeous out there. Did see a lot more sunshine, obviously, yesterday afternoon, and now we're back into that cycle where we've got more clouds around here this morning. And, yeah, temperatures are are up even a little bit higher than what it was yesterday, as are the, uh, the dew point temperatures. Uh, we stayed in the low 70s in the afternoon, so that was better, and it's only a couple of degrees from the previous few days, but it was definitely more comfortable out there yesterday afternoon. But I'll tell you what, walking across that grocery store parking lot, Boy, when that sun's beating down, it's hot out there. So we'll see a little bit of a, a drop in the humidity this afternoon. Not bone dry, but more pleasant, more comfortable, a little more tolerable. It comes back up overnight. And again, we'll go through the same same cycle tomorrow and then even going into Sunday and Monday. So high temperatures, heat index readings, high temperatures are going to be still in the low 90s here in town, uh, right around upper 90s and some low hundreds. And yes, heat index readings are going to be right around triple digits for a lot of folks down around 105 down to the uh, southwest, but lower than what it has been. So it is obviously, like I said, a little more tolerable in the afternoons. Going uh, on into the future, it, again, we go through the cycle with the morning clouds, more sunshine in the afternoon. Same thing all the way through the weekend. Overall, a good looking weekend. Uh, low mid 90s here in town, obviously hotter to the uh, west and to the southwest. 
And then on Monday, I think this computer model kind of pushes things a little bit. It's got a couple of sprinkles here to the east. And again, this is that one that kind of like I uh, say broad brushes things, but um, off to the east, maybe a shower or two, but I think a little bit better chance of rain talking 20% comes in here Tuesday as well as into Wednesday. Now it won't be a sure thing at all. And of course, rain chances have been kind of getting pushed back a little bit. Uh, so it looks like it'd be mid mid ish week and maybe even into Thursday of next week for small rain chances. 85 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies. We'll have some of these low clouds hanging around here this morning. And again, watch out for a speck of mist here and there on the roads. And so it may, you know, just slow things down a little bit. Again, lower humidity somewhat a little more pleasant. 92 high temperature today. Again, these numbers are being held in check. We've got low, maybe mid 90s. And then again, by the middle of next week, and this is not a sure thing for uh, rain. You know, again, we could even after all that rain, we could use a little bit. Nice little lawn watering. Uh, a couple of uh, showers going to be possible by the middle part of next week. I found myself wishing for rain yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, wow, I wish it would come back. It's funny. It was, I was at the grocery store talking to somebody and he go, oh, I'm so glad the rain's out. I said, I'm not going to complain about it, you know, and and even some of the, you know, plants like mm -hmm. we can use a little drink here. So sure, we'll take it. Thank you, Mike. 451, about 78 degrees. And up next, a look at a new movies hitting theaters this weekend. Plus, we're going to hear from an Indiana Jones star about the 40th anniversary of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, three, six, zero, fireball three. Daily four numbers, eight, nine, eight, six, fireball six. Cash five, two, 10, 11, 25, 34. And your Texas two step, 11, 13, 25, 34, bonus ball 21. We'll be right back. The perfect summer movie arriving in theaters this weekend, plus a big anniversary for Indiana Jones. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Some are calling it the perfect summer movie. The musical In the Heights is in theaters this weekend. Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda's first Broadway play now on the big screen. And star Anthony Ramos says he can't wait for you to see it. We made this movie with a lot of, a lot of love, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of pride, a lot of, uh, we, we put our whole our heart, soul into this film, and, um, and that was yours. So, uh, yeah, thank you. In the Heights is in theaters and also streaming on HBO Max. Don't stare at the scenery rushing by. Look at a fixed point on the horizon and just lock your eyes onto that. <laughs> if you're looking for something just for the kids, Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, is just in theaters. And streaming on Paramount Plus, it's Infinite, a sci-fi thriller starring Mark Wahlberg and Chiwetel Ejiofor. The first Indiana Jones movie turns 40 on Saturday, Raiders of the Lost Ark, debuting June 12, 1981. And star Karen Allen says she loved it from the first scene she filmed, where we meet her character in a bar drinking men under the table. Harrison comes in and she punches him in the face. And I just remember reading it and thinking, wow, that's my kind of girl. <laughs> All four films getting a special remastered re-release this week in honor of the anniversary. And chart-topping rapper Kodak Black with a birthday today, he's 24. While Game of Thrones Emmy winner Peter Dinklage is 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And don't forget they're about to start work on a fifth Indiana Jones movie. I know, it's hard, what, 40 years? Mm, 40 years Eek. since the first one. <laughs> I know, another dated reference. Yes. Uh, 40, 456 on your Friday morning. Glad you're with us. President Biden and other world leaders are set to formally open their summit today in the United Kingdom. We're going to have a preview of today's events. Ahead, uh, plus uh, Xbox showing off its new TV app and streaming stick. We'll get a first look at the new product coming up in Tech Bytes. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you the story of a woman diagnosed with a mental illness and how she battled through it. And Transguide, let's see if there are any flashing lights out there for construction or accidents. Nope, not at I-10 and Ralph Fair Road. Might be a sprinkle or two on the lens. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. He has traffic updates coming up in our next hour. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police need your help in identifying the shooter who murdered a deaf and mute man on the city's east side last Friday. The details from Crime Stoppers just ahead here on GMSA. 
The G7 summit kicks off in England for the first time in two years. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. What's on the president's agenda? Coming up. And congratulations, you made it to the end of the week. The humidity may not be as bad this morning, but we are seeing a few sprinkles out there in different parts of town. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, June 11th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday, and it's kind of nice to feel a few little sprinkles. It's promising. Yeah, it is. We'll see if the rain chances amount to anything else as we head into the next five to seven days. Uh, maybe down the road, but uh, as far as this morning is concerned, all it's going to do would be kind of a nuisance. I don't even know if it would really uh, kind of refresh your, your lawn at all with some of these sprinkles that are out there because they don't last all that long. So we're at 78 degrees out there at the airport. Port. The dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere is at 74. It is a little bit higher than what it was at this time yesterday, and it will be dropping down somewhat later on this afternoon. So a little bit more comfortable to be outside, especially in the shade. Later on this afternoon, we'll hit a high temperature up to 92. The aquifer yesterday's reading, it did drop down four tenths of a foot. And the allergens, everything is on the low side. Once again, lowest mold readings. It had dropped down to low yesterday and uh, or the day before that as well. That was the lowest we'd seen in about a month around here. All right, as far as uh, some of the heat index readings right now. So we do have enough humidity out there to make that 78 feel like 81, 86 in Stinson. And 85 is what it feels like right now at uh, Castorville and throughout the rest of today. Obviously warm, humid, maybe a little bit of mist around the area this morning and uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon, mostly sunny again. Not quite as humid. Still humid out there, but just a little more tolerable like it was yesterday afternoon and this weekend. Good looking summer weekend uh, sunshine and it's kind of funny because this is the last weekend, last full weekend before the start of uh, summer officially next Sunday, mid 90s later on this weekend. And then next week is going to be starting off on the, the hot side, mid 90s and then maybe a shower or two by the middle part of the week. Wouldn't get really excited right now about rain chances next week, but hopefully they improve. I know my lawn could still use a little watering from the sky. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we had a few little raindrops here on our view from Trans Guide. I was showing you a little bit earlier, but it looks like it's dried out and so do the roads. Roads look pretty dry right now. Let's take a closer look here from the view at Trans Guide at I-10 at Ralph Fair. Traffic pretty slow right now, but we have a few people that are already out there getting their morning started with us. But the good thing is roads are looking pretty dry right now. So let's go ahead and jump to some problems that we're spotting here, though. Uh, unusual congestion here at I-37 northbound and, and southbound going into these eastbound lanes of I-10. You can see traffic slowing down there to about 25 miles per hour and 24 miles per hour in those north and southbound lanes. So just be prepared. Uh, I've checked the trans guide cameras and text dot. doesn't look like there's anything being reported right now, but we'll be keeping a close eye on this as the morning does pick up. Uh, some Something that we also have spotted that's actually improving now is the slowdown here at 35 southbound at Schwab. We talk about this every day. Usually there is a slowdown that's out there in that area that clears out. It was a little bit uh, longer. We're seeing more of those slowdowns in those southbound lanes a little bit earlier, but this is a really good improvement now that the morning is getting going here. Let's bring it over to our inbound time. So if you are coming in from 35 at New Braunfels, we're looking at a 26 minute commute time to the downtown San Antonio area. And if you're coming in from Bolverde on 281, we're looking at 26 minutes right now. And and right there on I-10 coming in from Bernie, 24 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. Now let's go ahead and bring it back here to I-10 at Ralph Fair. A few more people getting out on the roads this morning. And coming up, if you plan on hitting the roads, going on a road trip, or need to stop at the gas station, we have those gas prices. And whether or not that could put a pinch, or you'll face a pinch at the pump, that is, we'll have those details coming up right here on GMSA. This morning, San Antonio Crime Stoppers have released new information. The death of a man who was shot in front of a home just last Friday. It happened in the 200 block of Nelson Avenue on the city's east side, and the shooter is still on the run. Alicia Barrera is live with the latest from investigators. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the victim in this case is Davis Gilbert, a 60-year-old deaf and mute man, and he was gunned down in his own vehicle. And thanks to surveillance cameras in the area, now Crime Stoppers has is able to release the information that you're about to see on your screen. This is a picture of the vehicle involved. According to Crime Stoppers, the silver Hyundai Elantra drove by the 200 block of Nelson Avenue just after 11 p.m. on June 4th. That's last Friday. Someone inside that silver vehicle fired multiple rounds towards the victim parked that was the victim's parked vehicle and then took off. 
Police say Gilbert was found with multiple gunshot wounds to the chest and was rushed to Bamsey, but later died at the hospital. At the scene, police did find numerous shell casings in the yard. Several others were found scattered on the street towards New Braunfels Street. Anyone with information or that recognizes the silver Hyundai Elantra is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Any information that leads to an arrest could pay up to $5,000 cash. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. President Biden will be a part of a group of the G7 summit today, where, among other things, they're expected to discuss the global economic recovery from the pandemic. The president and first lady, Dr. Jill Biden, also expected to meet members of the royal family. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. Today, President Biden stepping into his first G7 meeting since taking office, boasting confidence as U.S. Commander in Chief. I'm very pleased to be here. Day one of the three day work session set to focus on getting the world back on a good financial footing in light of the devastating global health pandemic. The leaders also expected to agree on a global minimum corporate tax, at least 15% to aid their recovery. Members of the British royal family, including Queen Elizabeth, also expected to join the events today, kicking off with First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, highlighting early childhood education with Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge. But ahead of a packed day, the First Lady and the President, greeted by British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his wife. The two sides reaffirming the long special relationship between the U.S. and the U.K. It's a breath of fresh air, uh, a lot of things they want to do together. And in a nod to President Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Biden and Johnson formalizing changes to the 1941 Atlantic Charter, which set goals for the two nations in a post-World War II era. Updates include addressing climate change, cyber attacks and global health threats before wrapping up his first full day in England. In times of trouble, Americans reach out to offer help. President Biden also making it official. The U.S. will donate 500 million Pfizer vaccine doses to nearly 100 countries. It's also in America's self-interest. As long as the virus rages elsewhere, there's a risk of new mutations that could threaten our people. And we're told G7 leaders will also discuss how to multiply the impact of economic aid to developing nations still tightly gripped by this pandemic. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. San Antonio police have released edited video of a West Side traffic stop that escalated into the deadly shootings of two men. The family of one of those men is disputing what was released. The traffic stop happened April 16th on Pin Road near Highway 90. The encounter starts off calmly. The officer, a five year veteran, approaches the driver, Sammy Barbosa. Barbosa's family says he was pulled over for not using a turn signal. The officer smells the odor of marijuana and tells Barbosa to step out of the truck. Police say the front seat passenger, Alex Garcia, can be heard asking a woman in the back seat for a gun. Within seconds, police say Garcia opens fire, hitting the officer in the hand. The officer retreats and returns fire, hitting Barbosa, Garcia, and the woman in the back seat. An SAPD lieutenant says the officer clearly feared for his life. Barbosa's family says the videos don't show the entire story. The version that was released to the public today was a very edited and scripted a video that I feel like portrays a, a certain justifiable as like killing somebody. I don't understand why the police officer would shoot first at the driver knowing that he was compliant and didn't have any weapons, then shoot at the person second who's firing at him. Both men were pronounced dead at the scene. The woman shot the torso survived her injuries and has not been charged as of yet. According to police, the officer was treated for the injury to his hand. Another video just released by the San Antonio Police Department shows the gunman who fired shots at San Antonio International Airport back in April. In this case, only narrated portions of surveillance video were released, saying the park police officer involved was unable to activate his body worn camera due to the situation. The angles of video provided show the gunman Joe Gomez firing multiple shots towards people and vehicles. That suspect was wounded by a park police officer before Gomez turned the gun on himself. He was rushed to a hospital where he died. A portion of the 911 audio from that shooting was also released. San Antonio 911, this is Jessica. Do you need police, fire, or EMS? Hi, there's um, a police um, shooting at the airport. They're at the airport, there's someone shooting. 
The piece of audio from that day and internal records show officers were forced to assign themselves to the shooting call after a dispatcher said she did not know how to handle that situation. Both the stories can be viewed on KSAT.com. 509, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, one of the biggest publisher of video games is hit by a data breach and hackers are the selling source code. What that means for consumers. And next, San Antonio World War II veteran memorialized with a special flyover tribute. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we are starting today, much like yesterday. Not too bad, but it is going to heat up. We'll be right back. 513, honoring those who serve. San Antonio World War II veteran James Spencer Calvert, who passed away at the age of 96 back on April 20th, is being remembered. Last night, he was memorialized with a special Air Force flyover with pilots from Randolph Air Force Base and Lackland. It happened, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it happened at San Antonio Country Club overlooking the golf course in Port Sam Houston. The pilots executed the missing man formation, which traditionally honors a well-known military service member or veteran. One aircraft flew into the sunset honoring Calvert at a special celebration of his life. I was thinking how much dad uh, is enjoying this because <laughs> he's, I'm sure he's watching, you know, and, uh, but, you know, in his typical humble fashion, he's going, this is for me, you know, uh, you know, why, why would they be doing this for me? Calvert was honored by President George H.W. Bush for his service and awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. He also earned the Air Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the Asiatic Pacific Ribbon with three Battle Stars and the American Theater Ribbon. And time now is 514 and about 78 degrees out there. Up next on GMSA, first look at a new product from Xbox that makes it even easier to watch movies and play games. Well, shingles. Oh, you mean Bill. He's been a real pain. Again with the bill. Well, it looks like a face. Hearing about it 24-7 is painful enough. I don't want to catch it. Well, you can't catch shingles, but the virus that causes it may already be inside you. Does that mean Bill might have company? Stop. You know, shingles can be prevented. Shingles, shingles can, can be, be what? Yeah, prevent it. You can get vaccinated. Oh, so I guess it's just you, me, and Bill then. I'm making my appointment. Bill's all yours. 50 years or older, get vaccinated for shingles today. At Panera, we take care of dinner time. We use fresh, clean ingredients to make mouth-watering masterpieces. Order on the Panera app and get free delivery through June 13th. Only at Panera. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over-the-counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. In today's Tech Bytes, video game giant Electronic Arts says it's fallen victim to a cyber attack. EA says hackers claim they've downloaded source codes and the engine for some of its most popular games, but the company insists no player data was stolen in the breach. Microsoft wants to increase access to Xbox games. It's working with TV makers on an Xbox app that will be available on devices. That's expected in the next year. The company is also developing its own streaming stick, which it says will be available soon. Finally, Google has developed artificial intelligence software that can produce computer chips much faster than humans. The tech giant says the software can produce the chips in less than six hours. It would take humans months. In other words, AI is helping develop future AI faster. So the question remains, what came first, the chip or the robot? Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. Time check 518. And from the looks at TransGuide here, it doesn't look that there's too many problems out there, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. That's right, Mark Seth, and it's a good Friday treat for us when we see that the roads are pretty clear right now. View from TransGuide shows that things are pretty smooth right now on our roadways. Let's go ahead and take a closer look here at 281 and almost people getting out on the roadways, of course, as we get this Friday morning started. Thankfully, no big issues to report right now, although we are keeping our eye on a few things. One of those things is a little bit of congestion, a mess that's happening over here in these northbound and southbound lanes of 37 going in east uh, of I-10. You can see that there's some sort of congestion that's happening there, slowing down traffic to 24 miles per hour uh, in both of those lanes, both directions, I should say. So that's something that we are watching closely. Again, I've checked the TransGuide cameras. Uh, nothing happening out there right now. TxDOT is not reporting any incidents as well, but we'll be monitoring that throughout the morning and see what's going on out there and how that could impact your morning commute. Now, if you are going to be hitting the roads this weekend for any road trips, let's go ahead and see if gas is going to be causing any issues for you right now. Any pinch in the pockets there. Right now we have two 
267 triple A's reporting here in Bear County. And if you're around the state, 275. And right now we're also looking around the country, 307. So this is a little bit of a jump compared to last uh, this past Monday when we showed you these gas prices a little bit earlier in the week. So if you're like me, it's a good time to head to the gas station and fuel up your car. And I did that yesterday almost 40 bucks wasn't cheap. Wow. Uh, so yeah, but things are looking pretty good right now. But if you're gonna be hitting the roads, it's time to get some gas and hopefully you can stay full for a, a little while. Yeah, if you if you're just now uh, realizing how expensive it is to gas up, yeah. welcome to oh, the yeah. party, Stevie oh. Cavazos. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the traffic, traffic. And you have an fun. SUV too, so that I do, I do. It's not fun. Yeah. yeah, it's like what about forty percent higher. I mean, to fill up your tank, it seems like than about eight, eight, nine months ago, something like that yeah. last fall. Yeah. I'm I'm a bad wife because I I didn't fill up, and then my husband was the one who had to. <laughs> Oh, so you, so you leave it on E? He's like me. I, was, e. I, I told myself, I'll do it later, and then he ended up filling up. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the computers making themselves. Oh. And that's called Project Skynet, by the way, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> From Terminator? From Terminator. <laughs> and we know how that ends. Yeah. Anyway, I uh, finally found something that likes the humidity. I guess the moonflowers love the humidity. Over there in, uh, so again, look at how thick and green all that is, and those beautiful blossoms out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Uh, we've seen, uh, uh, Steve was just talking about how nothing showing up in any of the trans guide cameras. We saw a couple little sprinkles, nothing right now, see, that nothing showing up. Weird. It looks pretty clear out there. Uh, there have been a couple of little sprinkles, a little mist around the area this morning, so there could be a few damp spots on the roads here and there. Uh, yesterday, high temperatures, third day in a row, just at 90 degrees which is two below the uh, normal high temperature, the average high. Laredo, uh, 100, same thing, Del Rio, and then obviously some upper 90s down here uh, along the Rio Grande Valley. Today, about the same situation, maybe a degree or two higher as things continue to dry out. And we will see, obviously, a little bit lower humidity. The ground is drying out somewhat, so that's not feeding to the, uh, the humidity out there. And, of course, drier air uh, heats up a little more easily. It doesn't take as much energy to heat that up as it does the moist air. So we're going to be right around low and some mid-90s around the area later on today. Looking at the big picture of things on the water vapor imagery, and you can see a lot going on. And the one thing that really stands out is out there in the Pacific Northwest, that big, big trough. Off, and obviously out ahead of it is a, a ridge of high pressure that really directly won't be affecting us all that much. The other interesting thing is very cold air up there in the higher elevations of the, the mountains and also in northern United States, 44 degrees cut bank. And then it is even hotter in Omaha, about the same temperature all the way up there in the uh, northern Mississippi Valley as it is down here. So out ahead of that big trough, some very warm temperatures. We are going to be staying pretty much status quo. Nothing's really going to be changing for the next few days. Maybe temperatures go up a couple of degrees and then hopefully next week we get a shot at a couple of showers. So other than a um, little bit of mist here and there scattered about this morning, 85 degrees at noon, partly sunny skies. We'll see more sunshine later on today and the humidity will go down a little bit in the afternoon, slightly more tolerable. Same cycle tomorrow as well as Sunday. And again, as things continue to dry out a little bit, then we'll see temperatures getting in toward the uh, mid 90s. Still nothing outrageous. Now, of course, we'll have a little bit of a heat index to deal with. And then by the middle of next week, a small chance for a couple of showers around here scattered about a shower or thunderstorm or two. So it doesn't look great as of right now. OK, but you never know. Maybe we'll yeah. be surprised. I need to. I've been, <laughs> you know, you get this kind of complacency as far as not watering. And now it's like, ooh, I think those plants need to be watered. So Already. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Right now it's 523 on your Friday morning. And up next in your morning spotlight, the son of Eddie Van Halen releasing his solo music debut. And Danny Elfman drops his first solo album in nearly 40 years. So we'll pick three numbers first, though, and here they are coming up. OK. It's a big weekend for new music releases, including a debut from the son of guitar legend Eddie Van Halen. CNN's Rick Del Magella has a story in the Hollywood Minute. That's Wolfgang Van Halen's Don't Look Down from his solo debut, Mammoth WVH. The music video shows him playing every instrument through the magic of editing, but Van Halen did in fact play every instrument on the album. I think a lot of people will enter the process 
imagining that it must be some sort of continuation of a Van Halen sound, or that I'm exactly like my dad, and there must be a bunch of crazy guitar solos all over the place. But what I really want to get across with this is that I'm my own person and I'm my own musician, and I'm going to keep doing that and carve my own path instead of just tread my father's, because I think it'd be really boring if I was just a carbon copy of him. I'm so happy, happy. Danny Elfman's plans for 2020 included extensive live performances, but after the pandemic derailed those, he found himself feeling creative during lockdown, resulting in a new solo album, Big Mess. I started to write some classical music and it's like, it wasn't happening. And I just suddenly said, what happens if I pick up the guitar? And I just opened up this try a few things. And the next thing I knew, Pandora's box, totally. And it's like, I could not shut that even if I wanted to. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. What the heck was that? A little creepy. <laughs> what the heck was that? I was telling Mark I was glad to see him on the Zoom call and not the yes, music video. Yes, that was video. much uh, less um, Scary. Disturb disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> 528 on your Friday morning, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the FBI saying the agency is dealing with the highest number of hate crime investigations in the past five years. We're going to tell you the reason behind the increase. Plus, Consumer Reports experts highlighting the best ways to fend off all those unwanted robocalls. And ahead on GMSA at 6, are you looking for something new to play with on your phone? We're going to tell you about the SA Humane Society's free new game. Making headlines this morning, a closer look at why the FBI has seen the highest number of hate crime investigations in the past five years. And taking a look outside with live cam, uh, starting off much like yesterday, not as humid, but yes, we are expecting things to heat up today and over the weekend. Here's the good news. We've made it to Friday. It is June 11th. That's right. It is great news. And, you know, we can maybe relax by the pool or do something to cool off or get a bunch of popsicles. Just something because it's going to heat up, right, Mike? I like the bunch of popsicles thing, too. So that's always <laughs> nice. I mean, just it all works. Yeah, yeah it kind of brings out the kidney again. But, um, you know, one thing it you just have to watch it. Lots of sunscreen, lots of water all weekend long, no matter what the uh, the humidity is or even the, the sky cover. And um, we do have a little bit of mist or there has been a little bit of mist around the area this morning. Seen a, some on the uh, north and northwest sides of Bear County. So just kind of watch out for a damp spot on the road this morning. Not anything of any consequence other than maybe making things a little bit dampish. Dew points at 74. So yeah, it is humid out there. Not as humid as a couple of days ago, but you'll feel it when you step outside. Heat index readings, there is enough humidity to make it feel like 81 here in town. 86 Stinson and uh, 82 is what it feels like at Port SA right now. Now we will see the humidity drop a little bit in the afternoon, kind of that daily cycle. Mold, pigweed, grass are all on the low side 85 at noon 92 high temperature again yesterday we couldn't quite pop up above 90 for the third day in a row no complaints still stayed slightly below normal it was a bit more pleasant in the afternoon and again especially in the shade it'll be a little bit more pleasant later on this afternoon nice looking weekend forecast details on that in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos anything big going on sir no nothing right now other than that it's Friday Mike I mean things are looking pretty good here from trans guy people getting out getting their Friday morning started a little bit earlier, so let's take a look and see what's happening here on our roadways. This is the view from Transguide at 35 at Salado Creek. A little bit more people out on the road now that the morning is picking up. We're seeing a little bit more traffic, but thankfully no major issues. However, we have been keeping a very close eye on a little bit of congestion that's happening here off I-37 north and southbound uh, going towards I-10 east. Now, thankfully, a little bit of resolution now that the morning's continued here. Traffic now picking up to 54 miles per hour, 24 here going into these east bound lanes from I-37 north into I-10 east. So that's a good sign there. And let's go ahead and jump to another slowdown that we have spotted that's actually also showing some improvement since uh, we came out for the sequence here. 37 southbound to 410 was seeing a little bit of slowdown there to 25 miles per hour. A little bit of an unusual congestion for this hour, but it looks like as the day picks up, we're starting to see things resolve. So that's a good sign right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times. If you are coming in from Highway 90, we're looking at 19 minutes to downtown San Antonio. And if you are coming into 35 for our coming in from 35, that is from Lytle. We're looking at 17 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. And again, 37 from Pleasanton. We're looking at 28 minutes. So good signs right now as we head into the weekend. One last look here at Transguide. We'll be watching closely here in the traffic lab as the morning does continue. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen.
San Antonio police say a woman is dead after she was hit by a car along Interstate 10. It happened just after midnight on the eastbound access road of I-10 at Days of Zavala Road. Investigators say the woman had walked out to the street when she was hit by a person driving a black car. Police say that driver stopped and tried to help. The woman was pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, no charges have been filed. Hate crimes are on the rise. That's the latest from the director of the FBI. There is a push for change. However, as CNN's Britt Conway reports, some lawmakers say it's not enough. An Asian woman hit in the face. A rock smashed through the window of a synagogue. A 91-year-old Asian man shoved to the ground. A Jewish man beaten in the street. More and more brutal, racist, and hateful attacks are happening all over the country. A lot of Asian Americans who are looking over their shoulders. Really the normalization, I think, of anti-Semitic incidents. The FBI director, the director testified before Congress this week. The, the organization is handling more hate crimes now than it has in years. From fiscal year 19 to fiscal 20, a 63% increase in FBI hate crimes investigations opened. Uh, and this year, fiscal year 21, uh, we've had the highest number of hate crime investigations initiated uh, in the past five years. But hate crimes are vastly underreported because law enforcement agencies aren't required to submit their data to the FBI. We're trying to do a lot to engage with the community and with state and local. Last month, the president signed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act. And the Department of Justice laid out six steps it's taking to improve efforts to combat hate crimes. But as the country faces a rise in the number of hate groups and extremists, lawmakers say it's time for the FBI to step up. The time has come to put the resources of the Bureau where they belong. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. In other news this morning, a transformer fired an electrical substation in Puerto Rico has knocked out power across the island. Utility company Luma Energy said they're working to restore the system. Puerto Rico's governor called it an explosion, and state and federal law enforcement authorities are investigating the cause. Earlier, Luma Energy said it was hit by a cyber attack. However, there's no immediate indication of a connection between the website attack and the substation incident. The CDC warning about a spike in the common cold virus called RSV. It is spreading across the south, leading to an unusual wave of late spring disease. It can cause pneumonia, especially in very small children and babies. It is also associated with severe disease in older adults. The CDC issued a health advisory network warning to doctors and other health care providers to be on alert. 537, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, now may be the best time to own a home. We're going to tell you how the housing market is giving homeowners a much appreciated boost. Are you getting more and more of those pesky robocalls? Up next, we'll look at the top ways to reduce the number of unwanted calls. And taking a look outside with live cam about a couple of hour ago, hours ago, we saw a little bit of sprinkles on the way into work, but not much now. We will be checking in with Mike soon. Welcome back 540. Many of us are constantly dealing with robocalls each and every day. While there's no way to completely stop that, experts at Consumer Reports say there are steps we can now all take to reduce how many of those calls you get. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Day in and day out, millions of Americans getting bothersome calls like these. We just suspend your social security number. For many, it seems their phones are constantly ringing off the hook. The robocallers are doing everything they can to stay a step ahead of the game. It does get out of hand for a lot of people. While they won't ever go away for good, experts say there are simple steps you can Hello. take to cut down those calls, including activating the whitelist mode, a feature found on most smartphones. You can go to your settings and only allow those calls whose numbers are in your phone book to come through. The downside is that if you have an important call, they're going to get sent to your voicemail for the most part. Another option is contacting your cell phone carrier. Most have a variety of security settings available, like the stir shaken technology that helps recognize and label spam numbers. Some of them are free. Some of them cost ex extra money. Those phone features will give you a little bit more flexibility to decide maybe what kind of calls you want to let through. 
You can also download a number of third-party apps like Umail or Nomo Robo if you're comfortable with them accessing your data and information. And of course, experts say never pay money to or share your information with these anonymous callers. Instead, you can report the number on your phone or online at the Federal Trade Commission's website. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And time now is 542 and it's about 78 degrees right now. Only about half the adults in the U.S. say they swim well enough to save themselves from drowning. Up next, we take a look at some important ways you can save your own life, even if you are not a strong swimmer. Now that more people are taking to pools, rivers, lakes and oceans to cool off, one tragic part is the number of people who drown every year. One way to prevent this is to learn how to swim. And as David Sears tells us, even if you don't know how to swim, there are some things you can do to save your life. According to the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, 87 kids drowned in Texas last year. And according to the American Red Cross, barely half of all adults in the United States can swim safely. So what can you do to keep yourself safe? According to an article posted on PoolFence.com, choose swim spots wisely. Try to find a spot with a lifeguard nearby. They can do things like CPR and specialized water rescues when needed. But don't just rely on them alone. Make sure to take personal responsibility and use common sense. Next, if you find yourself losing control, try not to panic. Many places like the Great Lakes Surf Rescue Project have advised using the flip, float, follow technique. First, if you're drowning, flip on your back. Then float on your back to keep your head above the water and conserve energy. Finally, follow the safest way to safety. Get to a shallow part of the pool or if you're in the ocean caught in a rip current, swim perpendicular to the current's flow until you're out of it and then swim to shore. Finally, and most obviously, the best way to avoid drowning is to learn how to swim. There are a lot of places around San Antonio that offer swim lessons. Many instructors can even have you at least proficient enough to prevent yourself from drowning within a few weeks. And even if you are a strong swimmer, always wear a life jacket if you're feeling uncomfortable around water, especially on boats. And be sure that that life jacket you're using is approved by the U.S. Coast Guard. David Sears, Case of 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, it's a great time to be a homeowner with a rise in home equity value of nearly $2 trillion over the last year. That translates into an average gain of more than $33,000 per borrower in their home equity. CoreLogic, which keeps tracks of the numbers, reports the record low supply of homes has led to record home prices that drive the trend. The gains are enough for many homeowners to no longer be underwater on their mortgages. The strong housing market also means owners may be able to sell their home instead of losing it to foreclosure. There is a new study out that shows underage drinking consumer drinkers rather consume billions of dollars worth of alcohol. The study found that underage youth consume 17 and a half billion dollars worth of alcohol in 2016. That amounts to 8.6 percent of the alcoholic drinks sold that entire year. Despite these new numbers, according to the uh, Gillings School of Global Public Health, underage alcohol consumption has been falling in recent years. With kitten season in full swing, SA Humane Society wants to make sure you know that you know, what you can do if you see any feral cats around your neighborhood. So officials with the San Antonio Humane Society say the safest thing for you and the cats to and then the cats is to actually catch them when possible. Now, if you don't want to get scratched, animal experts say the best way is to use traps so you can avoid close interactions with them. On our website so with ferals, feral cats and people want to rent traps and things like that. They can they can do that. Um, and they can find out information about that, and then they can, once they have the, the kitten, cat, or the cat trapped, then they can bring them in. If you want to help out with kitten season expenses, you can donate items to the San Antonio Humane Society. We have a link to their Amazon wish list right now on sahumanesociety.org. Oh, look at the video. <laughs> I'm actually a, a, a dog fan, but the, that was cute video. Of Very the cute kittens. kittens. Yeah. Gonna need some homes. Yeah. 548 right now on your Friday. Go ahead and check in with Steven. I know you're a fan of both. No, I'm, I'm a cat man mainly. You're a cat. I love dogs. Oh, okay. Dogs are great, but you know, cats just 
I've never met a cat I didn't love. So, but you know what we're spotting here on our roads are just a few little issues here and there. Nothing too major, but let's go ahead and bring you to a crash. that's happening right here off Gulebra. That is uh, right at 36th Street, not too far from Esmeralda, not causing many issues right now, not likely to cause many issues since this isn't on any major roadways, but we'll be watching that closely and seeing how if it's going to be there for a little while. But thankfully, uh, it's not on any major roads again, uh, just right here again between 36 and Esmeralda. We'll be watching that one pretty closely. Some progress here at 37 northbound things are clearing up quite nicely as we are seeing the day getting started here uh, traffic moving back to 60 miles per hour still a little bit of a slowdown though here in these northbound lanes of 37 going to i-10 east so do expect a little bit of a slowdown if you're heading in that direction but nothing too major right now so that's a good sign but things have been pretty quiet for this friday morning 281 at hildebrand shows a smooth drive for our early morning commuters let's hope it stays that way agreed yeah yes it looks like Star Wars behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that one. It kind of does, though. If there was a second, wasn't there two suns? Or was yeah, two that's, true. Oh, that's true. That's true. The only thing, uh, there were no trees on that planet. No, no. That Just was, the top part. Uh, Luke's planet was Tatooine. Tatooine. There you go. Tatooine. Yes, there was no, no I, trees in that shot. Forget. I like that analogy, though. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC <laughs> Connect picture. Beautiful out there. Uh, there may be, I can't tell if that's just a... Reflection here, a little bit of a sheen over there by the airport. Again, we've seen a couple little uh, sprinkles, some mist around the area this morning, so there could be a damp spot or two on the roads around here. And as far as, come on, there we go, clicker. And down to the beach this weekend. It's going to be a good beach uh, weekend if you're driving down there. Now, of course, ultraviolet light, sunscreen, sunscreen, and then more sunscreen. Keep applying it according to all the experts. Temperatures will be in the low 90s. Of course, humidity is going to be up there. Uh, water temperature is just about uh, 82, 82 feet, 82 degrees. <laughs> That'd be some big waves. Uh, about 82 degrees the water temperature, so it's almost getting to be uh, kind of bath waterish. but it's always nice to go stick your toes in the sand down there. All right, humidity is higher this morning. It will be dropping down a little bit. Again, keep emphasizing that we're now into the usual sort of uh, daily cycle in the summertime. Earlier in the week, we just kept all that humidity very high in the afternoon, so it was so miserable in the afternoon, but it's a little more pleasant. Still, I mean, it's going to feel pretty hot out there. We'll still have a heat index to deal with, but it's not going to be slightly better to deal with in if you're in the shade in the afternoon. It's a little more comfortable. High pressure has built on in here. And that's what's really controlling our weather right now and also making it pretty hot well up there to the north of us. The one thing, though, instead of usually in the summertime, we get this Bermuda high, as it's called, and that parks a little bit more to the east of us. And this one being a little off to the west, it's going to sort of edge its way a little further to the west. And so what that's going to do around the front side of it, there's going to be probably not until maybe late Monday, Tuesday, some little disturbances that are going to be kind of moving on in here, wrapping around the front side of that. So that's what's going to at least give us a small chance for a couple of showers around here. Not until I don't think really until maybe Tuesday into Wednesday. It's not a great chance of rain as of right now. 85 degrees at noon, partly sunny skies, and then high temperature today up to 92. Again, not as humid in the afternoon, still humid, but not just re oppressively, ridiculously humid. As things continue to dry out, the ground's been drying out, obviously. Uh, we'll make it up into the mid-90s this weekend in through Monday, of course, Flag Day, and then a couple of showers are possible. We can get real excited about it by the uh, middle of next week. What's happening today at 1 on SA Live, Mike? We are celebrating the Philippines. With. And it's all about that and Philippines Independence Day. So we're going to have some wonderful food Oh, it's delicious. I don't know if you've ever had it before. Very good. And also uh, some uh, dancers on there. Mm -hmm. And it's the dance with the uh, where they have the long poles on the ground. Oh, and yes. Yeah, yes. Gonna okay. Going to be doing that. So. And you guys are going to join in on the traditional Filipino dance? Um, Fiona used to do it. She grew up in the Philippines. She okay. is, oh, is so she would, she would. Yeah, and so she used to do it. She had said she hasn't done it in a long, so long Fiona, time. So Fiona's going to join in on the traditional <laughs> Filipino dance. Mike will assist. Yeah, I'll watch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's oh, today at <laughs> 1 on SA Live. Thank you, Mike. Yes, thank you. Let's go ahead and look at today's winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3, 3, 6, 0, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 8, 9, 8, 6, Fireball 6. Cash 5 numbers 2, 10, 11, 25, 34, Texas 2 step, 11, 13, 25, 34, with a bonus ball of 21.
Good morning. Coming up on GMA on this Friday, President Biden on the world stage this morning at his first G7 summit since taking office, meeting with world leaders and the queen. We have the latest. That's all right here, plus much more coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. Tickets are selling quickly for this year's only Fiesta Parade, but don't worry, the Texas Cavaliers River Parade will be broadcast right here on KSAT 12, your Fiesta station. It's happening June 21st at 7 p.m. If you'd like to try and see uh, the parade in person, you can see if tickets are available. We have a link on our website at KSAT.com. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA, new details on a shooting involving an officer. The suspect's family speaking out. Smithson Valley Baseball has a big game coming up. We've got a preview. San Antonio Crime Stoppers need help solving a murder case. You could get a cash reward. We have details on that in our next half hour. And Trans Guide right now. Traffic is building out there at 281 and Hildebrand. Stephen Cavazos will have more on that. Mike's weekend forecast coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. One hour of news, weather, and traffic still to come. This morning, new information on the murder of Davis Gilbert, a 60 year old man who was killed with a high powered rifle on the city's east side. The information just ahead here on GMSA. Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond could be on the move. We'll tell you where sports better say she could end up as an NBA head coach. The G7 summit kicks off in England for the first time in two years. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. What's on the president's agenda coming up? And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, I witnessed a few sprinkles coming into work, but nothing crazy. We are expecting another hot afternoon, but hey, it's Friday. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you, Rice and Shine. It is Friday, June 11th. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Friday, yay! And it's going to be hot for those of you who like hot weather. The good news. Let's get an update on things are looking for the rest of our Friday. Mike's here and we can have typical morning cloudiness out there. Yeah, and yeah, hot like you were talking about, uh, Stephanie, but seasonally hot. And those yeah. clouds will give way to more sunshine later on today. It's pretty humid when you step outside right now, but then we will go through our kind of summer cycle that we do each and every day. Um, other than, you know, different from earlier on in the week where we kept that humidity in the afternoon. It will be dropping down somewhat later on today. Right now, though, we do have a bit of a heat index to deal with. Temperatures are are pretty much in the mid upper 70s, but heat index readings add a couple of degrees to that right now. There is enough humidity out there. Low amounts of mold, pigweed, as well as grass. And again, we keep clouds around this morning. Temperatures will stay pretty steady, maybe fluctuate a degree or two. And then we'll see these low clouds clearing on out. And we'll keep a few of them around, obviously, throughout the morning. And again, like we were talking about, Watch out for a little bit of a mist around the area this morning. It's not it really haven't seen anything on any of the transguide cameras recently, but there may be some out there, so the roads could be damp. 85 at noon, and then we are going to be topping off. Once again, these temperatures are held in check. This is seasonally hot, 92. Now, of course, still have some humidity. It will feel hotter than that, and this is going to be the situation over the weekend, although we'll probably go up a couple of degrees by the weekend. Looks pretty good. Details coming up in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. It's been a pretty quiet morning. What's now? What's yeah, going on now? Definitely true, Mike, and you know the Transguide cameras have been looking pretty dry. We've been trying to keep a close eye out for those droplets as well, but things are looking pretty smooth for this Friday morning. Let's go ahead and jump over here and show you how things are shaping up off 1604 at Babcock, which is usually a pretty big problem as the morning does pick up a little bit, but right now things are running quite smoothly, although we are keeping our eye on a few things that are popping up on our radar. The first is this crash that we told you about here off Gulebra at between 36 and Esmeralda, not causing any issues right now, but there's a little bit of a yellow there, which indicates that there's some slowdown. So if you're in this direction, maybe heading out there in a few minutes, just be careful and give those first responders plenty of room. Not too far. We have spotted a stall here off Highway 90 westbound at Enrique Barrera Parkway, not causing any issues right now because this is going towards west, uh, toward Castorville. But let's go ahead and check those inbound times. If you're coming in from Highway 90 from Castorville to the downtown San Antonio area, we're still looking at a 19 minute commute time, guys. So that's pretty good right now. Nothing too major. Uh, if you are coming in from Lavernia on 87, we're looking at 23 minutes. And on I-10 coming in from Seguin, things are looking green. 30 minutes right now. So that's a good sign if you're going to be coming out and uh, heading in this area in the next few minutes. Very good sign as though pe people are heading out there. 35 at 1,000 O. 
folks. Traffic, of course, building up as the morning is progressing, but of course we got your back and we'll be watching it as well. Thanks, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help solving a murder case. Incident happened last Friday on the east side, the 200 block of Nelson Avenue near South New Braunfels Avenue. The victim, six-year-old Davis Gilbert, deaf and mute. Investigators say he was sitting in his car parked in a driveway when a silver Hyundai Elantra drove by. Then someone inside that car shot and killed Gilbert. If you have any information in this case, please call Crime Stoppers. The number on your screen, 210 224 stop. You could be eligible for a cash reward. San Antonio police have released video of a traffic stop that escalated into the deadly shootings of two men. This new edited video from the department shows a traffic stop that happened back in April on Penn Road near Highway 90. In the video, the officer approaches the driver, Sammy Barbosa. According to the report, the officer smells the odor of marijuana and tells Barbosa to step out of the truck. Police say the front seat passenger, Alex Garcia, can be heard asking a woman in the back seat for a gun. Within seconds, police say that front seat passenger, Alex Garcia, opens fire, hitting the officer in the hand. The officer gets out of the way and fires back, hitting the driver. Barbosa, the front seat passenger, Garcia, and the woman in the back seat. Police say the officer feared for his life. And ahead in our next half hour, we're going to hear from the driver's family. New developments in a kidnapping case. The last suspect accused of helping take a mother and daughter against their will now captured. Corpus Christi police say the mother and daughter were found safe. Many agencies were involved in this case, including the FBI right here in San Antonio. Officers say one-year-old Zaley Zamora and her mother Jezebel were found just before 9 a.m. yesterday. Christian Garcia was arrested shortly afterwards. Police say he used to date Jezebel and went to her home before forcing the mother and daughter into a car, setting off an Amber and Clear Alert Tuesday. Investigators say 26-year-old Roderick Garcia is accused of helping with the kidnapping. He was arrested around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Governor Abbott pushing for more restrictions at the border, signing several items into action. He says an increase in security is needed to combat the record levels of illegal crossings, drugs and contraband into Texas. Our Jonathan Cotto has been covering the governor's visit to Del Rio and shows us some of the key moments at the Border Security Summit. It was an optimistic and energetic crowd at the summit. Governor Greg Abbott announcing a new and enhanced disaster declaration. It was a summit hosted by Governor Greg Abbott in an effort of bringing together various law enforcement agencies, local officials, and even landowners to announce his comprehensive border security plan. A crackdown on the increase of illegal border crossings, he says, is an ongoing crisis. I will announce next week the plan for the state of Texas to begin building the border wall in the state of Texas. He says migrants crossing illegally will be arrested and confined for trespassing. He calls the state's response the most robust border plan the nation has ever seen. Democratic State Representative Eddie Morales says attention needs to be placed elsewhere. I would much rather focus on technology. I would much focus on personnel, uh, improving, putting that money into improving our ports of entry. Morales says Del Rio, along with other border communities, will benefit from additional resources. Abbott says the governor's task force on border and homeland security will crack down on illegal crossings and illegal drugs, adding securing the border is the federal government's responsibility, but Texas will not sit idle as this crisis grows, allocating $1 billion for border security. The governor said some great things, but I, I'll be honest with you, some of it was just fluff. It was fluff. It was just kicking the can down the road, uh, and it was throwing more money at the problem and just you know, just getting more in intertwined with bureaucracy. Abbott says the increase in arrests will require an increase in jail space, but local officials say some facilities are already at maximum capacity. Abbott will be announcing next week his plans to build the border wall, but he hasn't detailed exactly how it will be funded. Reporting in Del Rio, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. President Biden, world leaders from the Group of Seven Industrialized Nations set to formally open their summit today in the UK. The coronavirus pandemic high on the agenda. Vaccine sharing commitments from the president and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson also showing off a coordinated effort by the advanced economies to make vaccinations widely available everywhere. 
Queen Elizabeth is also attending a series of G7 events today, along with other royals, including Prince Charles, William and Kate. First Lady Jill Biden and the Duchess of Cambridge will appear together this morning at a British preschool. In Washington, a bipartisan group of senators eyeing an infrastructure deal with $579 billion in new spending as part of a $1 trillion total package. The 10 senators have been huddling behind closed doors, encouraged by President Biden to keep working on the effort after he walked away from a Republican-only proposal this week, unable to resolve differences. The senators are cautioning that changes could still be made, but called their tentative agreement a realistic compromise framework that would be paid for without any tax increases. A San Antonio World War II veteran giving, given rather a much deserved honor here in Military City, USA. Last night, 96 year old James Spencer Calvert, who passed away back on April 20th, was memorialized with a special Air Force flyover. Pilots from Randolph Air Force Base in Lackland could be seen overlooking the San Antonio Country Club golf course at and Fort Sam Houston. The pilots executed the missing man formation, which traditionally honors a well known military service member or veteran. Another aircraft flew into the sunset honoring Calvert at the special celebration. One of his sons, Joe, says he knows his father was watching from above. I was thinking how much dad uh, is enjoying this because <laughs> he's, I'm sure he's watching, you know, and, uh, but you know, in his typical humble fashion, he's going, this is for me, you know, uh, you know why, why would they be doing this for me? Calvert was honored by President George H.W. Bush for his service and was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. He also earned the Air Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the Asiatic Pacific Ribbon with three Battle Stars and the American Theater Ribbon. Joe says one thing his father taught him, he will always remember to live a good life. You need to be loving, caring, and a compassionate person. And time now is 610 and about 78 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA could Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond be leaving San Antonio for a head coaching gig. We've got the details. And taking a look outside with live cam. We're not too bad out there this morning at 78 degrees, but it is going to heat up. Be prepared. We'll be right back. Morning sports, lots and lots of baseball. Good luck to Smithson Valley. The Rangers facing Rockwall Heath in the Class 6A state semifinals later today at Dell Diamond up in Round Rock. It's the Rangers' first trip to state since 2005 to after they beat Los Fresnos in a single elimination game over two days, 3-2, to two, to win the Region 4 finals. We have faced everything. You know, We faced changing locations, lightning delays you know, after every week. You know, we played, you know, unbelievable atmospheres. You know, we, we are ready for this. We have to relish every moment that we get because, I mean, now it's our last week. So, I mean, we got to take everything in like it's the last thing that we're going to do because it is. Batter up tonight in Round Rock starting at 7 o'clock. Good luck, guys. to the missions now following an upsetting loss to Midland Wednesday night. Missions bounced back to win last night. Now here's what we know. It was a close one, but San Antonio managed to get the W 5 4, but a win's a win. Series against the Rockhounds continues tonight 7 5. By the way, missions have three Jersey giveaway nights this season, and the first one is tonight. The first 2000 fans will get the free Jersey. There will also be post game fireworks tomorrow night. What are the odds Becky Hammond becomes a head coach in the NBA this offseason? Pretty good if you're listening to sports betters. According to a website, Becky's listed six to one odds to become the new head coach of the Indiana Pacers, who just fired their coach after one season. Not bad odds, even though she's behind Terry Stott, who was fired after nine seasons over in Portland. Hammond has been a Spurs assistant since 2014, also listed as seven and one uh, seven to one odds to land the Orlando Magic head coaching vacancy, which is considered fifth overall. Good luck, Becky. Yeah, good luck. We don't want to lose you, but we're wishing you well. We want you to get one of those jobs. Yeah, we do. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and check our Friday morning traffic with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, it's Friday and good news for our early morning commuters. Nothing too major to report right now, although we are seeing a few more cars out on the roadways now that we're getting the morning kicking off here. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how things are shaping up here off I-10 at Ralph Fair. We showed you that a little bit earlier. A few more again cars out on the road. Uh, looks pretty busy here at 35 at Martin, but 
Thankfully, nothing too major to report. It's looking very green here in the Alamo City. We spotted a few slowdowns, but those have quickly resolved as the morning picks up. Uh, but we'll be watching very closely and see how things could impact your early morning drive if you're going to be heading out in the next few minutes. And if you one of those places that you need to get to is a gas station here. We have your gas prices right now for the weekend, at least for today. Uh, AAA is reporting that Bear County right now has 267, uh, but around the state we're looking at 275 and around the country 307. So again, maybe a good time to head to the pump if you're going to be heading out to a morning, uh, perhaps a trip on the weekend. So, uh, you know, again, just keep an eye on these gas prices as the morning does pick up. You may want to stop there and fuel up your car before uh, these prices maybe go up or, you know, maybe you're already full and you have already a uh, good reason to head the roads. But other than that, 281 almost looking pretty good right now, but we're watching closely, but nice and smooth so far, guys. If you guys need a ride, hit up Steve and he just filled up yesterday. <laughs> I did. I <laughs> Yay, did. let's carpool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I actually have another driver, a chauffeur. So. Oh, a chauffeur. Yes. Hey, you guys still tell me to bring coffee, and I'm chauffeuring you around here to the station. I'll pick you all up next Monday. It's you called being the new guy. The, yeah. Literally, the director said it's called being a rookie. Uh -huh. <laughs> and welcome to GMSAs. Aww. Happy to be here. By the way, where are those donuts? <laughs> anyway. Next week. <laughs> Free beer tomorrow, as they always say, right? Uh, it's warm and humid out there this morning. We have temperatures that are still a little bit above normal. We, well, normal low is 72. We are at 78 right now. It's actually slightly warmer than what it was yesterday. We were a little more pleasant yesterday. So warm and humid. Now we will see a bit drop, a bit of a drop in the humidity later on this afternoon, like we saw yesterday. So slightly more comfortable if you're in the shade. And this weekend, it's going to be getting hotter. Not anything too extreme, just a little bit uh, on the above normal side. I love this picture with all the colors out there. Nice green grass, beautiful flowers in the foreground. That bird bath there. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. All right, there's all the uh, morning low clouds we got hanging around here. We have seen a few little sprinkles on the north and northwest sides of town this morning, but I haven't seen anything since then. That was a couple of hours ago. 80 is what it feels like here in town. 86 at Stinson. So yeah, heat index, mm, air conditioning is really going to be your friend uh, this morning as well as today. And even this afternoon, temperatures will be still held in check. We'll be in the low 90s here in town, but the heat index reading will be up in the upper 90s. So even though we do get a little bit of a drop in the humidity, yes, we'll still have some of the heat index out there and a lot of uh, triple digits. But again, no, uh, no heat advisories are posted or any uh, statements about that. So obviously you want to take it easy. Lots of water and lots of shade, if at all possible. So around the country, uh, just kind of obviously looking at the, the big picture, up to the north, there's a lot of uh, rain up there, big low off the Pacific Northwest. And for us, really upstream, there's not a lot going on. And that's because that high is dominating things, and that's pretty much going to stay in place. So with this configuration, you don't see any real big changes in the forecast. Although, as we continue to dry out a little bit more, that's going to allow temperatures to creep up another couple of degrees over the weekend. But still nothing uh, too extreme. There will be some humidity out there. The high is just off to the west of us. And what that means is coming around the front side of that, there's going to be some little glitches in the atmosphere, little disturbances. And so by about uh, midweek next week, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, a couple of showers are going to be possible. Not a great chance of rain. It's not like there's a big storm system moving in here for midweek, but at least a chance of rain right now. 85 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies, and then high temperature today at the 92. Mostly sunny, slightly lower humidity, still present, but not ridiculously humid. Over the weekend, we will creep up a couple of more degrees as things continue to, especially if the ground continues to dry out. Then it'll be the situation into Monday as well as Tuesday. Maybe a shower or two scattered about here and there starting perhaps uh, early Tuesday, you know, one or two of them, and then into Wednesday and Thursday. Not a great chance of rain, but just a small one. We'll take a small chance. Yeah. Yeah. Any anything. But at least we had all that rain in the past weeks, you know, to Except I did have to write myself a note this morning saying, make sure you water those plants. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we have to remind the ones ourselves. That were just planted so they don't die. And remember, <laughs> if you're gonna mow this weekend, keep it long because this is we're gonna start heading the other way now. Yeah. That's true. As That's far true. as uh it's it's gonna turn brown here within the next couple yes. of months. And do so early. Six twenty one, <laughs> seventy eight degrees. And looking for something to do this weekend after the break, a new floral attraction guaranteed to brighten up your day.
day, Unilever does good for communities across America. Every squeeze, every smile, every drop, every style, every spray, every bubble, every day. Dove, Swath, and Hellman's donate everyday products to local communities. Every day you does good. Unilever. Sauvage Dior Available at Macy's I tried a laxative that's both gentle and fast Great tasting Dolgalax soft chews works naturally with the water in your body in as little as 30 minutes Puts you comfortably in control Dolgalax soft chews In this morning's GMA First Look, bracing for rising prices. What we are seeing right now are prices getting back on track. Consumer prices up 5%, rising at the fastest rates in over 10 years. A year ago, shoppers saw prices rising very slowly and even declining. This year, price increases at record pace. Electricity up 4.2% in the past year. The hikes also affecting goods like clothing, the used car market, gas, travel, and certainly groceries. There's a lot of demand. A lot of people are out wanting to buy things right now, and that bids up the prices some too. But there are specific strategies geared toward this temporary inflation to help you save money. Coming up at 7 a.m., we have the shopping hacks to keep your budget in check, even if prices go up more. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Happening now on CaseHead.com, Traders Village opening a 10-acre sunflower field tomorrow. Visitors will be able to explore the area, take plenty of pictures. Admission is $7.99, but children under the age of two are free. We've got more details posted for you on CaseHat.com. Looks beautiful. Time now is 626 and about 78 degrees out there. We have a lot more coming your way in the next half hour, including new video of that shooting released from SAPD over on Penn Ro Road. The family, one of the suspects, speaking out why they are disputing what is seen in the video. Now at 6.30, late breaking news on the west side of town. You're looking live where San Antonio police are on the scene of a shooting. Alicia Beretta just arrived and is gathering the latest information. She will have a live report. And taking a look outside with live cam, not as humid as it was a couple of days ago. So we'll take that and it will be a hot day. But as Mike says, seasonably hot. Good morning to you. It's Friday, June 11th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And, you know, for, with the heat, we still have to prepare, though. Yes, <laughs> uh, lots of water. And like the, the experts always say, don't wait until you're Thursday. Just, you know, continue if you're going to be doing outdoor stuff. Kind of um, prehydrate, I guess you could say, you yes. know, just constantly drink water and sunscreen. Sunscreen, yes. Definitely. Yes, my doctor told me that every single day, no matter what, even if it's cloudy out there, plenty of uh, sunscreen. We have a few clouds hanging around here right now, kind of a little bit of a haze. Yeah, there is some humidity, so we do have a bit of a heat index right now. Uh, temperatures are in the upper 70s here in town. Add a couple of notches to that is what it feels like. 86, yeah, it's pretty, pretty darn warm down there around uh, Stinson, although uh, even it is, yes, humid, but again, like Stephanie was saying, not as humid as a couple of days ago. Mold still is on the low side, same thing with pigweed and grass. And then throughout the rest of today, we have warm, humid conditions. Don't be surprised if there's a little bit of mist out there this morning. We saw some earlier, haven't seen any in the past hour or so, but there could be just a little bit of a, you know, spits and drizzles here and there. Mostly sunny skies, not quite as humid in the afternoon as it is right now. We'll still have a heat index to deal with, but just not outrageously high heat index readings. Sunshine mid 90s as we continue to dry out. Temperatures will warm up a couple of degrees. Uh, not anything outrageous though, and it's going to start hot next week. Then maybe a shower too. be nice to have another couple of showers around here. Don't get real excited about rain chances, but at least there is that chance of rain coming into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes and traffic authority Stephen Cavazos. It's been a pretty slow morning on the roads, which is good news. Yeah, it's good news. It's good news for the weekend, too. And I think the sun's trying to come out in this shot and trans guide, Mike. But, you know, we're keeping a close eye on things. But as you said, things are pretty smooth right now. View from 281 at almost shows that traffic is picking up. People getting their day started. Maybe going to go grab a cup of coffee. Hopefully bring it to us. But thankfully, things are pretty smooth right now for this 
Friday morning as we head into the weekend. No major issues to report. Uh, we spotted a few slowdowns this morning here off 35. We spotted some around 410, 37, but things have quickly resolved themselves, which makes for a good start to this weekend. So if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few minutes, now would be the time to hit the roads because things are looking pretty green and smooth. That should be the color of the day. Now let's go ahead and take a look here at these inbound times. If you are coming into the downtown San Antonio area, let's start over here with Pleasanton. Uh, things are looking uh, pretty good there. 27 minutes if you're coming in from 37. Now, if you are coming in from Lytle, we got a very short commute time, 16 minutes right now. So it looks pretty smooth right over there. And let's jump over here to New Braunfels uh, coming in from 35. 26 minutes right now. So again, pretty good start to this Friday morning. If you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area, another view here at 2D1. It almost shows that things are shaping up quite nicely and we'll have more coming up this morning on GMSA. We go now to breaking news on the west side. Police investigate a shooting in the 5400 block of Middlefield Road off of Medina Base Road. Alicia Benetta is live at the scene and Alicia, was anyone hurt? Good morning. Well, we do know that someone was hurt, taken to the hospital. We know that victim is in serious yet stable condition. But here at the scene, the search is on for that gunman, which is why Eagle is also out here at the scene helping track down the shooter. Two, two canines also assisting in the search. So this is what happened. Police say this all unfolded after a disturbance between two women that live together. Things escalated after the boyfriends got involved. One man pulled out a gun and shot the victim in the left arm. The suspect then took off on foot, headed south of here. They think, police do think they know who he is. No name yet, but we know he's about 5'9", possibly in his 20s. His girlfriend, we're told, is still on the scene. Police say a shotgun was used in the shooting. And here's what we know about the victim. The victim is in his 30s. The family did try to stop the bleeding and actually helped wrap his arm before paramedics arrived to the scene. He's now recovering at University Hospital. Again, we know his condition is serious, but he's stable. He's expected to make it to recover after this. Detectives will be speaking to the witnesses. Again, this is between two families. They all live in, in this um, blue, whitish home right behind me. They'll be speaking to them, but again, the focus right now is definitely to arrest that shooter who, again, is suspected to be around this area. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. One woman is dead after police say she was hit by a car on the city's northwest side. It happened around 1230 this morning on the eastbound Axis Road of I-10 and De Zavala Road. That's where police say the woman walked out into the street and was hit by a car. She was pronounced dead on the scene. The driver of the car did stop to help and will not face charges. Now to one of the top stories we're following this morning, the San Antonio Police Department releasing body cam footage of a shooting on the city's west side. This happened back in April on Penn Road. Two suspects were killed. An officer was hurt. The new videos released and edited were produced by the police department. The family wanted the suspect disputing what was released. Steve Spreester has this story, and we do want to warn you, you may find this hard to watch. The heavily produced video released by SAPD starts with an introduction from their public affairs manager. This critical incident video release is intended to provide you with information as the department currently understands it. Then a San Antonio police officer narrates what's happening in the body cam video. The car was occupied by two men and one woman. This was the traffic stop on April 16th on Pin Road near Highway 90. The encounter starts off calmly. The driver is Sammy Barbosa. His family says he was pulled over for not turning on his blinker. The police officer asks him to turn off the car and place the keys somewhere that he can see them. I'm not going to take off for you. I'm going to get the keys. If you ain't going to take off, I'm just going to put them up here just so you don't take off. It's for my safety. Now you're going to right through the door. Look, I'm not. There you go. Put them up there. Yeah, there you go. The officer asks Barbosa to step out of the car because he smells marijuana. I, look, I did smoke. I did smoke earlier, it's and it, it, but it's the smell on me. Okay, I'm cool. being honest with you. In the edited video, police say the passenger asked the backseat passenger for a gun. The police officer tells Barbosa to step out of the truck. What? 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 Sir, please. The passenger with the gun shoots the officer's finger. The officer retreats behind his patrol unit to get his gun that's now on the ground. 
He returns fire, hitting Barbosa, the front seat passenger, and a third passenger in the back seat. In the edited video, the police officer says that the officer on the scene feared for his life. This is a second angle of the shooting. This is dash cam video from the officer's patrol unit. You see the officer grabbing his gun from his holster as the front seat passenger, Alex Garcia, fires a gun, hitting the officer first. Tonight, Barbosa's family says these heavily edited and narrated videos don't show the entire story. Barbosa's sister, father, and mother saw the unedited versions earlier this week. Barbosa's nephew spoke on behalf of the family. He said the unedited version shows Barbosa complied with the officer's demands the entire time and kept his hands where the officer could see them. The version that was released to the public today was a very edited and scripted a video that I feel like portrays a, a certain justifiable as like killing somebody. I don't understand why the police officer would shoot first at the driver knowing that he was compliant and didn't have any weapons then shoot at the person second who's firing at him. Sammy Barbosa was a father of four. His youngest, just four years old. He was killed the day before his other son's sixth birthday. His family, says Barbosa, would never shoot a police officer. Taught me everything that I know today and just becoming the person who I am, which is being honest and kind and always putting your family first no matter what. And that was our Steve Spreester reporting. You can read more about this story on Kesa.com. Uh, now to an update on a story we first brought you here yesterday on GMSA. We've learned the name of the man arrested in connection with an apartment fire that displaced at least 20 people. Bryn Garza is now charged with arson of a habitation. According to arrest records, Garza lived at the Bricks Terrell Hills apartments off Harry Wurzbach Road. A fire started there yesterday around 4 in the morning. Flames could be seen shooting from the roof and part of that roof collapsed. The Red Cross is helping families displaced by the fire as the investigation continues. A local judge fighting to get the pride flag back in her courtroom. COVID-19 protocols ease at the courthouse and the first in-person criminal trial took place this week. Erica Hernandez gives a recap of what took place this week in courts. On Monday, Bear County Court Judge Rosie Speedling Gonzalez explained her current fight to get the rainbow pride flag back in her courtroom after she was forced to remove it back in 2019 when a complaint was made to the State Commission of Judicial Conduct. It came across very much like I was being targeted and discriminated against. An appeal hearing is expected to take place in Austin but has yet to be scheduled. On Tuesday, local administrative judge Ron Rangel eased health protocols at the Cadena Reeves Justice Center and the Bear County Courthouse. Social distancing is now down to three feet for those unvaccinated and masks are optional for those fully vaccinated. These changes will help judges during the jury selection process and also allows for jury trials to take place. The updated protocols are moving very fast. Things seem to be improving very quickly in our community. Um, we can see it, and as a result of that, we're starting to loosen things up in the court system. Also on Tuesday, the first criminal jury trial began. Bobby Martinez is facing a stalking charge for allegedly threatening and harassing his wife's boss in 2019. Jury deliberations are expected today after closing arguments are made this morning. And for more on the Criminal Justice Center, you can sign up for our Open Courts newsletter. The latest edition went out this week and has all the latest on what's coming up on the docket and getting to know Criminal District Court Judge Jefferson Moore. Just head to the Courts tab on KSAT.com to sign up. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 640 on your Friday morning. Chronic hallucinations caused this woman to see people transform. Just ahead, how she battled her way through schizoaffective disorder. And welcome back. It's about 644. Schizoaffective disorder is a frightening condition for those struggling through it and for the loved ones around them. Some people have hallucinations or delusions, and many also have the highs and lows of bipolar disorder. David Sears introduces us to one woman who wants to share her battle with the illness to strip away the stigma. Hard to believe that this vibrant woman was at one time so ill, experts said she would be institutionalized for life. In her 20s, Tina Collins began to have frequent hallucinations. Features would change until it, it evolved into a full, like, demonic hallucination. 
It took 20 years and 30 medications before Tina was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, characterized by symptoms of both bipolar and schizophrenia. My madness started slowly. 25 years later, Tina delivered a TEDx talk detailing her quest to get better. I found a psychiatrist and a therapist who also agreed with the diagnosis, but believed that my condition could be managed with medication and therapy. Tina's therapist convinced her to try a dating website. Really, it was less about romance and more about learning how to move through the world again. And then I met Dan, the nicest person in the world. They fell in love and married. And he moved into the house with me, my schizophrenia, and my Greek mother. Tina says she feels compelled to share her story. I am here to say that I am no longer a victim of schizoaffective disorder. I'm a survivor of mental illness. <laughs> as many as one in 200 people in the United States develop schizoaffective disorder at some point in their lives, no one is completely sure what causes the condition to develop, although having a relative with the condition increases the risk. David Sears, KSA 12 News. And if you're tired of playing Angry Birds, the San Antonio Humane Society has the perfect game for you. It's called Dog Dash. It's about a dog trying to get away from its owner who wants to give him a bath. <laughs> the dog digs up bones while running away and levels up as he collects more bones. The SA Humane Society partnered with IMG to create the game to bring attention to pet adoptions and the organization. It's fun, especially over the summertime, you know, while you're on a road trip with your kids or with your family. Hey, download the app and have some fun with it. And the best thing is that there's a link to our website so people can find out more about us, too. Sounds like my dog trying to get away from a bath. <laughs> the game is free and available for both Apple and Android users. Just search for SAHS Dog Dash in the App Store. You leave Gordo alone. I know, Gordo. He wants to be stinky dog. He can be stinky dog. <laughs> Gordo very much wants to be a stinky dog. <laughs> He's still a good boy. Yeah. 647 on your Friday. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. You also try bathing a cat. That's, that's Oh, not, my gosh. That's not, <laughs> that's not fun. I have the battle scars to prove it. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So not 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 fun. So, but just a warning for anybody that's a cat owner out there, but just let them clean themselves. But you know things are looking pretty busy here at 35 at Thousand Oaks. The day's getting started. It looks like the sun is also coming up. It looks like my clicker was a little bit of a delay there. So yeah, pretty busy out here at 35 at Thousand Oaks. Not too many issues out on the roadway, so that's a good thing. However, we have spotted a few stalls. Now this one over here, 281 southbound at Stone Oak Parkway. We know there's always a lot of construction going on out there, so just be a little cautious. It's not causing any issues right now, but you can see here along Stone Oak Parkway, we're starting to see a little bit of a build up there. Hopefully that gets resolved very quickly because we know traffic is going to be picking up here in the next hour or so. Another stall here at I-35 northbound right Right at loop 1604 near Von Ormy. Not many issues again out on the roadways, but a few stalls, slowdowns that we've spotted so far for this Friday morning, but it's been a good sign overall. If you're going to be heading out the door in the next few minutes, as you can see, things are looking pretty green. One last shot at Transguide Mike. Looks like drivers may also want to pack their sunglasses today. Yeah. Good idea because uh, obviously we are seeing a little bit of sunshine right now and a whole lot more later on today. And uh, once again, another great picture from uh, Sylvia over there in Seguin and more plants that love the heat. But you do have to water because we're not getting a lot from uh, Mother Nature. Haven't had any in the past couple of days any rain and uh, nothing in the next few days. And there's some of those low clouds still hanging around here, but they are breaking up rather nicely. All right, you know, haven't hit 100 yet here in town. Obviously, to the west and southwest, we've hit it. The the average first 100 degree day is not until the end of the month. So we're this is nothing really unusual. The latest first time we've ever hit 100 was back in 1985, September the 1st. And of course, back in 2007, no triple digit temperatures in San Antonio. It was really, really wet summer, of course. But then just two years after that was the most we've ever chalked up here in town. It was 59 days at triple digit temperatures last year. It wasn't until the 4th of July when we hit uh, 100 and then the end of July in 2019 
but a little bit earlier, 1st of June in 2018. So nothing yet and nothing in the forecast for triple digits. Now, heat index readings, of course, are going to be up in, in the triple digits. So we'll see some and have seen, obviously, 100 degree readings on the thermometer down there to the uh, southwest. So, yeah, you want to take it easy, but it's not ridiculously high heat index readings today. Um, still, lots of water, like we were talking about, lots of sunscreen if you're outside. And that's going to be the case over the weekend. 85 at noon, partly sunny skies. High temperature today is then going to make it up to 92. That is the average normal high temperature. Little bit of a, a drop in the humidity. Still enough, though, like I said, to make it feel like it's going to be well up into the, uh, the about upper 90s, low 100s. And then over the weekend, again, the trend has been with, you know, mold dropping down, numbers dropping down. We're drying out a little more. So dry air heats up more easily. So that's why we're going to start to creep up a degree or two here and there going into the weekend. Again, still nothing outrageously hot. Yes, there'll be some humidity around here going into uh, Monday and Tuesday as well. And then maybe a chance for a couple little showers. Not a big storm system moving in here. Just little glitches by the middle of the, the week for a shower or two. Okay, but for now, water the plants. Yes. <laughs> I have my note in my phone to do that. Today. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. About 10 till right now, 78 degrees. And human trafficking is a $50 billion industry happening right in our own backyards. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're looking at how the ongoing crisis is hitting home. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go and another turn at traffic with Stephen Cavazos coming up after the break. Happening right now on the city's west side, police are searching for one man who pulled the trigger and then made a run for it. The investigation currently is taking place on the 5400 block of Middlefield Road right off of Medina Base Road. Police say this all unfolded around 5 a.m. after a disturbance between two women broke out, but things escalated after the boyfriends got involved. The suspect, a man in his 20s, pulled out a gun and shot the victim in the left arm. That's according to police. The suspect then took off on foot, headed south. Police say everyone involved knows each other as they live together. Therefore, police have a very strong idea on who the shooter is. The victim we know is at University Hospital in serious yet stable condition. And right now this morning, the focus is going to continue being searching for that suspect. They're using Eagle as well as two canines here on the scene. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Good news for you early morning or early morning commuters. That is nothing too major to report on our roadways right now. The view from 35 at Martin here at Trans Guide. Things looking pretty good so far as we get into the weekend here. You can see that traffic is starting to build up a little bit, but not causing any issues right now. Although we have spotted a crash here off Highway 90 right uh, going westbound at Loop 1604. A usual big travel path for a lot of drivers there. But let's take a look if you're coming into San Antonio from 90 from Castroville. No delays right now. 19 minutes to get to the downtown San Antonio area. Area. Everything right now looking pretty green. 281 coming in from Olverde. We're looking at a 27 minute commute time, Mike. Take your sunglasses this morning. We do have some uh, some sunshine out there mixed in with some of these low morning clouds. It feels like 78 here in town, so uh, temperature has dropped just a little bit. 82 is the heat index right now at Stinson. Throughout the day, we'll make it up to 92 later on today. More sunshine. Decent humidity. I mean, still going to have a heat index up there today, but uh, it'll be a little bit more comfortable in the uh, in the shade and then it's getting a little bit hotter this weekend. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Definitely find that shade out there and have a great weekend. See you back here for GMSA at 9.